Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me again today. Index cards. Don't know about you, but I went mad on them. I found, I love index cards. They're just versatile, I can pull them out, I can do tags with them, I can do bits and pieces with them. And one day I went mental, as you do, and came across boxes of 300 for 50 cents. I think I bought six. Why do I need six boxes of 300 index cards? So today we're playing around <laughs> with index cards. There's got to be other ways of doing them. Um, I've got, yeah, sitting over there, can't reach them. I've got index cards that I've collaged on. I've got index cards that I've done. And they're, I don't get me wrong, I put them in my journals. I use them all the time as journal cards. So I've been playing around again. And today I want to play with index cards. Two reasons. One, to give you some ideas. And two, to use up some more index cards. So join along with me. And we're going to play with some index cards and hopefully you'll get some tips and tricks along the way. Right. They're index cards in Australia. I'm assuming they're called index cards everywhere. The, the ones that I've got are double-sided. Now, I know in America in dollar stores, I think you call them, or Dollar Tree, they're single-sided. And I would much prefer single-sided so kudos to you guys lucky you you get single-sided ones as are all double-sided well the many squillions that i've got are double-sided so i have a tendency like everything i dye everything um but my index cards i tea dye nearly everything else i use is coffee dyed i don't play around with all the other the colors and all the rest um that's it's not me, sorry. Um, I love it. I love the colours, but I don't cook. So I'm not... I drink coffee. <laughs> Hence why we have coffee dye. And um, I actually have to buy tea bags to tea dye. So I only ever go and get cheap tea. Um, I Hang on a moment. we will show you here. All right. These ones are nearly finished. These were just little ones. Impra ones, very cheapies, um, really strange tea leaves in there. But when they're dry, they're a real gauze. I keep my bags, so they're a real gauze. I, but they are tiny, very tiny to do anything with. Um, I also use the teapot bags because they're a larger bag and a different colour. So these are the teapot bags again they're a cheapie they're a supermarket brand one and i don't know a couple of bucks and you get oodles so you can see the difference in the color okay but so it just depends on what i've picked up at the time or anything else today what i want to show you first up is the teapot bags and i tend to do them at my desk so, as I said, I don't do a great deal in tea dyeing. Most of it is coffee dyed. And I do batches of hundreds of sheets of paper or packaging or whatever else, book pages, at a time. So, what we're going to do with these ones, just sit you guys back over there. I'll pull out a few. We won't do many, but I'll just pull out a few and show you what I made. So, sitting here in my little glass container, I've got two of the teapot bags in there. And a little bit of hot water from the kettle. Admittedly, the longer it sits there, the stronger your tea dye, your tea is going to become. Um, quite often I'll do it, leave it sitting there while I'm doing other things and go back to it. This was probably only done five, ten minutes ago. But I find the teapot bags are a stronger solution. Again, I like my glass mat because I can do it on my mat. And all I do is pick them up. I get my brush, sit that there. I go into my solution. I leave my tea bags in there. And I just wipe over. That's all I do. I then tend to 
sit them over there. I'll get my next one. And I usually do, oh, I don't know if it's four, eight, between 10 and 12 at a time. I'm not going to do that now. It's all right. They don't take long to dry. Now, we're just coming out of winter. Um, I did another pile yesterday because I thought this is what I need to do in my tutorial. Um, by the time I'd got to my 10th one, my first ones were ready to turn over. I'll just wipe that. So you can see they're almost dry now, just for the purposes of hurrying along. I'll go the other side of that one. I also don't iron mine or flatten mine. I like a little bit of a ripple. Sit you over there. I will occasionally do that just to flatten them back out again because the fibres all start to get wet in your paper they'll want to curl up so that one that one and that one once you've finished doing whatever it is you're doing um i quite often if i'm doing a larger batch especially of papers that i want that lighter tea dye look to them and I don't have enough room on my desk. My laundry is just that way. And I use the top of my laundry bench and the top of my washing machine. And I put down just plastic. And I'll sit them on that and then bring them in and do the other coating so I don't have to go far. When I'm doing coffee dyeing, I'm in the kitchen with the um, stove going. So I'll just leave that there. When I'm finished the video, I'll fix it up. I'll tip it out and pull out all my tea leaves and cut my bags apart and sit them on the sink to dry. They're usually dry within 10, 15 minutes and you can use them again. I'll just sit that over there and get it out of the way. Wipe all this up. And I keep thinking I really should use this paper towel as well because it has beautiful color. All right, so they'll just dry, but we'll grab one that we've already got tea dyed because let's face it you can use the white but for me with the Australian ones with this bright red line down it I'll grab one of these ones that I've that I've already got in my pile it just tones it down a little bit so if you look um, I haven't got any coffee dyed ones floating around to see the difference the coffee dye is a darker dye you can do them as light or as dark as you want so here's one let's play around as i said i don't like the red doesn't mean you don't like the red you can use the red not a problem at all so to get rid of that red um old dictionary and i just want to get rid of that i'm just going to move you to the side there before i sit this dictionary on it actually know what I'm going to do. Um, page protector, is that what they're called? And I'm just going to sit it over here on the page protector so that they're off my mat. They're drying beautifully. And then I won't sit anything else on. Oh, so they haven't even left a mark on that. Right. So I want just the wording. So I'm just going to tear up here this is an old old dictionary and it tears beautifully and they are awesome to use so i want i want to want to want round about half an inch three quarters of an inch tear off that bottom bit too makes it a bit easier to right so if I go three quarters of an inch, go that way, Kylie. That's easier to tear on the other side. One, two, three. Set my ruler on that. One, two, three. And then I can tear down. It doesn't have to be straight. 
but then I know I've got a straight edge for the next bit that I want to do at a later stage. Right. Oh, yes, that side's perfect. Right. All I'm going to do is just plate it, just to give it a little bit of oomph. Now, um, any packaging, I quite often do this with, do I have any floating on my desk? See that? Comes when you buy byproducts and they all get sent to your door in a box and you've got all this wonderful packaging sitting in there. I love this stuff. So I'm just going to keep pleating that. It doesn't have to be straight. We're not going for a world record of straightness. Well, I most certainly am not. If you want to mark and measure everything, feel free. Where is it? There it is. And all I'm going to do is sit it up along there. And I'll just stitch along it with a straight stitch. So how much more do I need? A little bit more. And I'm going to trim off that end. And I'll go in a little bit. Now I'm just going to run this straight across with the sewing machine on where that, that red line is. So if I hold that down, so just excuse me for a moment, I've got the sewing machine to my, that side, what's that side? My right side. <laughs> I'm never good at my right or my left, and I'm just gonna use a straight stitch, but I'm gonna make it a little bit longer in the stitch, just so that it's a longer stitch and it doesn't want to perforate at all. So just run it straight along where that that red line is and fold those back along as I go. And I'm sorry you can't see this, but I cannot bring my sewing machine over. The power points that I have in this house are atrocious and I just don't have enough. I'm going to take it to there, lift it up. Right, so I've just straight stitched straight across there. Oh, it's almost straight too. Now I'm going to trim off a little bit so that I can see my red on there. And it'll finish close to where that is. And I always tie off mine. I can, um, whoops, I could back stitch over it. My machine will do a locking stitch, but quite often I find with paper, it picks up the bobbin one and makes just a big mess. And if I want to see the back and use the back, then it's, for me, it's a problem. So I tend to just do a knot and knot them all down. If it's something that's going to be hidden, then I'll do my locking stitch and I don't worry about it quite as much. Right, so I've got rid of my red line across there. If I'd wanted to, I could have inked all this up. I'm being very good trying not to ink for you. And the same along there, just so that it highlights a little bit more. So now we want to do, this will be the front of my my index card or my journal card. And I'll tear. Just found some light. Now this is just a copy of a book page of a map. And I'm going to stick that straight down there like that. Okay. It's not very straight. As I said, I never tear straight. I never cut straight or anything. So we'll just tear that off there and I'll ink 
ink. No inking. Um, what I'm looking for is my glue. Here, that one. And I'll just put this on with some... Oh, excuse my nails, they're filthy. Because I have been playing with um, tea and coffee and all the rest and it gets right in. It does get in. Wasn't that a, a um, toothpaste ad? Alright. Hear that down there. Where's my doobie? And how about we put a little pocket using one of those tea bags on here? What needs trimming with that? Just that little bit just there. Right, so let's put one of those tea bags on the front. I want one of those darker ones. All right. Now, I like to sew my tea bags on. If I'm making a pocket, I like to give it a little bit of a, an edge there so it's a bit stronger. Now, I also find if I'm sewing them on, they're very, very... Thin, I suppose would be the word you want that I'm after. Um, they will tear very, very easily. So to stop them from tearing, what I tend to do on my desk, going to put it on my desk. There it is. If I use a little bit of baking paper, you can use. Oh my! I use baking paper or here we go. Oh, so much stuff sitting on my desk or tracing paper, but I find the baking paper you can see over even better. And I want it as translucent as possible. So what I'll do, it's where I've made my fold. I will then cut that around. Hope that's in shot. Um, I don't know. Does everybody call it baking paper? It's just the stuff I use when I'm cooking in the oven. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's called baking paper. And then that gives it a little bit more oomph so that when my needle's going through it, I'm going to sit you over there. <coughs> Excuse me. When my needle's going through it, it just gives it a little bit more of an edge to go around. So once again, and I'm doing the longest stitch so that it doesn't want to tear. And I'm just gonna run that straight under the sewing machine again, just from the top, as close as I can without losing my thread. There we go. Uh, finding my foot. you do that and I want to try and make it as um, what's the word I want as close to the edge without going too close if that makes sense and trying to be straight that's my biggest problem when I'm sewing I'm not wonderfully straight I really need to move my drink bottle because that's too close to the sewing machine. Right. Trim that. So now I've got a little pocket. The big test will be what it looks like on the back. It's not too bad. You can see where it's caught in there though. So if I'm using this as a journal card, I'll just tie that. Oh. All thumbs. All right, let's see if I can find something here. Here it is. There it is. There it is. Double knot. Oh. 
Right. All right, so I've now got my little pocket that's been reinforced with the baking paper underneath. I can still see my map. With this one, yep, you can see so much more. With the darker ones, of course, you can't. But what it needs is something in it. So we've got about an inch and a half, a bit over an inch and a half. It needs something going on in there. So, do we put another little piece of that? What have I got on there? See, I've got this everywhere. Collect. Collection. Yeah, that's what all this is. It's a collection. Oh, I've got some of that down here. Where it's all been... Um, coffee dyed and all the rest. That all matches in with it. So let's do some of that. So again, I coffee dye all sorts of, I think that's deli paper, more packaging, but it would have been a white tone. So I coffee dye all of that as well. So I want, I want, I want, I want, and it'll need to be a little bit thicker. What do we say we wanted? About an inch and a half a bit over. Let's go there. Let's see how well this tears. It is very thin. So I have a drawer full of yummy packaging type paper. That will give us the right length. And I'm going to actually stick that down together because it is so thin. Back with our glue stick. That was lucky. That could have been the rest of that um, tea bag solution that's sitting over there. That would have been fun. Right. Oh, very, very thin. Straighten that up as I go. Kind of. Still very thin, but I like it. Trim off that torn edge across there. So is it too thin to go in? No. Let's stamp something on it. Of course, let's stamp something on it. So what about postcards or something like that? Postmarks. Um, what am I looking for? Here we go. Let's find postmarks or something. I've got a big one of postmarks. Here we go. Just put it away, Kylie, and then you'll actually have some space. How's that? Right. Um, oh, and I'm using brown thread for the only reason is because I've already got brown thread in my um, machine where I'm working on a new journal. So, you know, it's not for the fact that, for any other reason but that. <laughs> All right, straighten that up. If I do that as an all over one there, and so we better use brown for that one as well. So I'm just using coffee in the archiver link. And yes, I know this is not a big enough block, but it works. I only need that section. Yes. All right. So there's that, but for me, now that one's fairly straight. It's a little bit lopsided, but it's fairly straight. If you don't like that, we'll put something else on the other end of it. I'm just putting these away so that I don't lose them. They can sit on the other side of my sewing machine. 
So I need something here. I could use a little torn piece. I could use some numbers. Oh, speaking numbers. That's not numbers. Maps, words. I could just put another little piece of book page there or another piece of map, a smaller one. Here. All right, let's use collect because we all collect. So I'm just going to tear around that. Oh, and I've lost my collect. So it was meant to be in there in the first place. like so okay so that finishes it off it covers up all the um stitching that could be anywhere you could hand stitch these you could glue them um look and i used to just i'd hand stitch i'd glue i'd do all of those sorts of things i very rarely ever used my machine until I got my new setup and I actually had room for my machine right beside me. Whereas before it used to sit behind me on another desk. And so I'd, I'd find that I was just way too lazy. Oh, that's come up a treat. Um, I'd be just way too lazy to get up and actually go over to the other desk. So with it sitting right beside me, I find that I turn around and use it all the time. Right, one. Another one, all right, so mind you, these are just about completely dry. Oh, that's got some nice goings on, on it. I'll just flick them over so that they continue to dry while I'm sitting there. Right, I like this colour. Usually you've nearly always got a darker side and a lighter side. Maybe you don't, I do. Um, so... What about we turn it into a pocket? Pocket with a difference. So, just folded that in half so that I've got that. I want to cover that. I want to cover that. I'm going to stitch that and I'll put a window in there. So, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got. Right, another really old paper pad. Um, so much so that this is a Kaiser Craft original one when they were still doing six inch by six inch. They haven't done those for probably 15 years, I don't reckon. So let's have a look. That's too large a print for that tiny little thing. That might work on the inside though. That's pretty to see through a window. I like that. I could just give it a boring front, couldn't I? Boring front. You know what I mean. I love script, but it's... That's those feathers again. Oh, hang on. What's that? Oh, could cut those. Let's just go script because that's just me. Right. I want to do... Something in there it needs to go all the way to the top. Pencil. I know I've got one here. So we're going to go all the way to the top. And I'm going to go in a little bit. So with my trimmer. up, so I go here. Make sure that's straight. Don't need that bit anymore. Sorry, did I just hit the the um tripod? Sorry, thinking. <laughs> <laughs> that will fit in there, and it's got to go all the way to the top. Lovely. All right, so I've got him. 
this one I'm going to adhere that on to that. I want the back as journaling. So it's not going to need glue technically in the centre. So we'll use this one. Let's hope. Oh, yes, there it is. How big a frame do I want? About like that. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Adhere that one onto that. I'm hoping you're still in. I'm still in shot. You're still in shot. You know what I mean? Thought I moved that as I went. Not doing very well there. There we go. Find my cloth. All right. So technically you're on. We'll cut around that. that one to the side because the side is always there I want to make a frame out of that so I will need my knife and I'm going to go from the inside because it's, there's lots of nice little lines there that I can follow so go down my side bits first so if I make it about that from the side and up to about there and down to that line how's that do the same on this side so about the same there as there which will be about that round about from that line up to about there i can follow this line across Where am I there? Just that one. And this line, depending on how straight it is. Oh, it's not too bad. All right, let's see what I've cut and what I haven't cut. And I've missed that bit. All right. So what I've got now is a little frame and I want some acetate. I always have my little my little odds and sods of acetate in here. These are just all cut offs. I sit that there. Oh, look, this is just a no-no when you're cutting acetate because it does want to slide. Just going to move that further over just to give me an edge and then it should be just inside. All right, let's see what I've got. Yep. Okay. I find little thin double-sided tape works the best when I'm putting acetate in and I just go on my edges. That way I don't run the risk of um, missing and getting inside my frame. Okay. I know it's a little bit slower, but I know then it's also an excellent bond and it's not going to move. That's that one. I 
want that all the way up to the top so that I don't catch it with my tag. Right. So I've got that. I'm going to put that one in there so that when it's like so, so that it'll have a tag in it, we can pull out the tag and um, you'll still see a pretty picture on the other side. I'm not going to glue on that. That's a no-no. I want my old magazine. I'll glue this one. Again, just with my with my double sided tape. It's not double sided tape. What is it? Glue stick. Check that out. Making sure I'm up the right way. And I want it all the way to the top. Like so. Give that a push. And I've gone in a little bit from the edge, the folded edge, just so that it doesn't distract it from... Distract it? That's not a word. It doesn't hinder it going over. So that's that. Now I can glue there and there, or bear with me, and I'm going to run it through that machine again and give it a stitched look all the way down. So, I would help, you know, if I actually moved my chair just over a tad, but that would just be way too easy, wouldn't it? So I'm starting at the top and down. Around the bottom. Oh, I missed that one. Doesn't have to be perfect. Life's not perfect. Alright, back up that side just to match it in, even though we only need to do our two sides. We'll make it even. And you can see where I've missed that. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. My machine's having a hissy. <laughs> it's been used too much. Um, I've been doing a lot of sewing in my latest journal. And so my pages and all the rest, and I think it's starting to tell me, look, hang on a moment. You bought me for fabric. Why are you not using me for fabric? And I do. I sew lace occasionally. <laughs> so. Okay, that's that one. And again, I want to use this side as journaling. I want to see what on earth I've done there we might go back to that bit later you know what i'm going to do all right so we want a tag that's in there so that it pulls back out and i want to fiddle with this so um paper flowers have we all got lots and lots of paper flowers floating around as well oh my word so got to use up some of these guys. Cream. Don't have any blues. Maybe those rusty coloured ones might work. It's more white than cream, isn't it? <laughs> All I'm doing is... um. It is a little bit more white than cream. I've got antique linen here, so I'm just toning it down just a little bit. Just so that it blends in a little bit better. Do you know what else I can do? Um, a little bit of script. Just a little bit of script. And I've got one here. Just I'm flicking through my... Um, my stamp album thing again. Right. Just a little bit of script. Just so that they match in. Um, coffee again. Coffee, coffee. Coffee, coffee. 
Oh yeah. All right, and I've changed the look of that paper flower again. So now it'll match all in with it. I could actually do a couple of those ones, couldn't I? I'm thinking now after that. So we'll get rid of the white off this. And once again, I've left the other colors on your cars. All right, we'll re-ink that one. I don't know if any of this is in shot, sorry. I need to swivel over, I think. I'm very much working on a on an angle. All right. I think that's my problem, I'm over too far today. Hang on, I'll move my chair over. I think it's so that I could reach the sewing machine. No more sewing machine. No more sewing machine. All right. Don't want to lose my birdie. Sit you there. Maybe a little few leaves. Just chuck those ones back in. Do you like that rust? Oh well. Oh well. Right. So I'll just stick you guys down so I don't forget. And that's just my normal white glow. Just putting a blob on put you first and i know that i'm not covering up my birdie how's that go there so i should have no yeah, no i'm not inking i'm not inking i would have inked around the edges um um, 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 here we go. Let's have a look. All right, that's easier. I've got different dyes in leaves and I've got a little punch. So we need a little um, bit of green or something. We'll go back to this one. This had green in it somewhere. It's a yucky green. Was there a better green? You know what there is? See this? Don't need many leaves. That's a slightly better colour for it, isn't it? So got one on the other side. <laughs> Yeah, that worked well. How about that? <laughs> now I want one, another one, I want another one. That's blue. Oh, there it is. There it is. So Let's go that one. Right, you're a bit darker. Just a little bit in that. And I find with my fingers some days it's easier with the tweezers. glue on that one. Doesn't need that much. And this one. And I'm thinking a pearl or something. Um, yeah, it might go down there because I don't I really don't want to cover up that birdie. So, pearls, bear with me. All right. I've got little ones on there. 
I go that size or go real little. Ah, uh, we'll just go little, little. Like that. Don't cut yourself if you're using your knife <laughs> to pick them up. All right. How's that? Now that was a journal card. So, you know, um, do I have a little bit? Oh, hang on. What? Sorry about my arm. Right, there's a tag that will be decorated a little bit wider that would go in like so. Nice little decorated tag. You pull it out and you've still got that with your journaling space underneath. How's that? So that's two. One more quick one. Completely different. The other thing I like to do with mine, I'm just going to put the lids on these. Clear up a little bit of this mess. So I'll put that away. It goes in there. That goes in there. Right. Sit you there. Sit you there. Sit you back over there. You there. Right. Little bit more space, little bit more space, little bit more space. Oh, and we've got this to use as a tag for something else now as well. Chuck these in the bin. We're going to use two this time. Because as I said, the whole point of this was to use up some of my journaling cards. So I want two. I like that colour. Yep. And, all right. And these are all from the same pack. <laughs> but they're never, ever exactly the same size. It's just one of those things. Mm-hmm. All right. I want, here we go. All right. These are my newspaper copies. So, just going to, uh, yeah, it's all right, I'm thinking. Where am I going? About stuff. So if I go up there, there is a method to my madness. I'm going to, what do you call it? Glue it? Oh, I'm doing really well with my words today. I'm going to sit these together and what I'm going to do is join them. I'm going to go that way actually. I'm going to join the two together. So I'm just sitting it on my grid. Only about half and half. When I move my hand you'll see. So now I'm just going to squash that one in there like so. Yep. Lovely, lovely. Right. Give that a push. Straight, but not quite even. But that's all right. right where have I not got? 
I haven't got any in there, so I'll just squeeze this bit back in here. And a little bit in there. Find this one. And that way I can squeeze it out and it doesn't end up all over my table if I put my cloth underneath and back over. It's dogs next door if you can hear them barking. It's a lovely day here today. And so um, I've got the back door wide open. <laughs> oh, so that's nowhere near middle. How did I work that out? That's right. You get the gist. All right, trim that. That might have been what I was going for. So I want to trim it because that journal card is not quite straight either, is it? So we'll just sit that there like so. All right. All right, so now I've created a little full journal section. I want to decorate the front. I am watching the time. <laughs> so, I like my newspaper. I want some lace. I don't want lace, lace, lace. Add something in there. Ah, uh, newspaper coffee ads. Let's have a look at ads. Because let's face it, it is a newspaper. So I've just gone to my advertisements. Some of these are digitals. Some of them are stickers. Some of them are just bits that I've cut from scrapbook paper or calendars and stuff. So I just have all sorts of bits and pieces in here. I do have, I do have, I've got quite a few sheets of these and I've used them throughout different bits and pieces, but what about that? I like the colors of that. Now, let's just grunge it up a little bit further. Now they're slightly shiny, um, so the Distress Ink will take to it, but not wonderful. So what I tend to do is I'll just grunge it a little bit further and then wipe the excess off. And I don't want them as sticky anyway. So it's going to sit you there. I want that. something that's gonna and this is me I can't not stamp so let's have a look I need a long one don't I so I've just gone to my my Timmy stamps at the moment um, my favorite Timmy stamp and I just have those all in a bag down the side here this is my favourite Timmy stamp because it is just, whoops, it's just like an invoice. So that might work. Let's pull that off. Let's pull that off. Sit that there. And what I'm going to do, this one probably won't fit this either from memory, but that's all right. So I'm working in coffee on top of the rest of it. So if I put that there, put a little bit down there, that'll work. Coffee, 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 coffee. There we go. So my coffee ink. Oh, no. <laughs> Told you this is my favourite one. Um, because it's never cleaned, it's never washed. <laughs> and it won't stick. That's all right. 
that's all right. That'll give me a double one. Right. Hang on to it, Kylie. I want to go about there. Cool. And a little bit down the end. It's not straight at all, but if I go with that column, that column, like so. It still looks like an invoice. It's only going to go behind everything. So I want, move you there, move you there. I want a little bit of lace. On there. Just trim you back that way. Oh, my nice day is not quite so nice anymore. Just hold that thought for a second. Yeah, I don't know if that makes a difference. I've turned on the overhead lights as well. We had sun shining through my room before, and I only needed my little spotties. Um, so I've just turned on the overhead lights as well. That side up. So I'm just going to use my lace or fabric glue. Um, I use the Helmar 450. So I'll just go along here. Still going to use my newspaper. All right. Just going to lightly straighten up that lace. And then I can trim off the edge. Ugh. All right, turn that over, trim that bit off. I've got all these glues and they're all open. Um, because this is a sticker, they're old stickers. I've had them for years and I've got numerous ones, numerous sheets of them. I can't, in my mind, guarantee how sticky they are. So whenever I'm using them, I put down a little bit more glue as well. So if you're ever concerned about a sticker, just put down a little bit more glue as well. Just give it that double shot. I'm going to go over my lace on there. Fairly close to the edge. Fairly close to the center. So my lace is in the background. And then what I want is that just sitting there like so. I think I want to tear that. So... What I'm going to do is take that next one down and I'll go from that so that I've got my straight edge there. And I want it, if I go from there, and local branch. Make sure that's straight. Once again, I'm heading off over in that direction, aren't I? Sorry. Beautiful. Um, I don't want to see my white side, so I just want it torn like so. like that how's that that works now because I'm going over my lace and all the rest I'm I want to use not my glue stick I'll use my thicker one and I'm going to put a little bit of my fabric one in there as well just to be certain I'll put them both on there why not 
One of them's bound to work, right? This one's kind of like hot glue gun. Um, I didn't take that off. Yuck. Now I'm going to be covered. That's all right. We'll finish on this one. Right. And then I can go and wash my hands and all the rest. That's why my hands and fingernails are always filthy. Because I'm forever playing with glue or mediums or inks or whatever else. So they just permanently are just yucky. Slide you up a bit. Give you a bit of a push when I can find my cloth. I've got glue coming out there. But at least I know it's not going anywhere. So how's that for a let's use the index cards? And that way we've... I'm going to need to put something else on that because that glue seeped right out. So let's use the index cards. It's given us lots of writing space. The trim down there and I'm going to have to find something for that. And I... Right, that needs just something in there. So, um, let's go to the add-ons container. Sorry, I'm going to reach across again. There we go. I need something. I could just put that in there, couldn't I? Is it MNO6 or is it 9 O-N-W. I think it's that way. <laughs> yep. We'll just put that there just to cover up where all that glue just came out. That's why I like my little container. And most of these, as you can see, that is not a perfect circle. It's because I've cut it out from a bit of scrapbook paper. And they all just go on my little add-ons container. And look, some of them are Tim Holtz from Field Notes. Some of them are digitals. Some of them are bits that I've cut from scrapbook paper. Um, I'd say that. It's been off the bottom of a tag somewhere. Same with that one. And they all just go in there for those. They, actually, I like that one. Right. So... Let's do a quick recap. I'll move that, move that, move that, move that. So we've got, we've used our, <laughs> we've used our index cards. We've used a few. We've, now they're dry. They're those ones from before. One, two, and three. And they've got some lovely colouring on them where they then sit on the plastic. Instead of the glass, they get this beautiful covering. So think of what you're sitting them on. So that's those. And then from those, we've done this one. Using our tea bag again as well. We've got rid of the majority of our red line. We've made a little tag to go in there as well. We've done this one, which has just been folded which will have a tag that'll go in with whatever you want on it. I'll get something done with that shortly. And then we've got a little book where we've used two of them with lots of journaling space on. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've got some ideas, not just with your index cards, with just general use of your other bits and pieces that you've got floating around. But use your bits that you've got floating around, okay? These have all been things that I've had floating around. The digitals, yeah, look, some digitals are ones that I've purchased. Uh, some are just photocopies that I've done of some old newspapers, etc. This This one that I've used was an old newspaper from 1929, and I use it over and over and over again because this is my hometown. So this news of the Northwest, um, 
I've got this actual newspaper and I just keep photocopying it and photocopying it and photocopying it because, yeah, this is my hometown. So it's one of my favourite, favourite ones. And I have lots and lots. If I go into my newspaper copies, which is this one, you'll see in here, oh, see, I have lots and lots of copies of that one because... Um, it is my local home newspaper, and it actually mentions my hometown, which was a small town in Tasmania. So, it oh, still is. <laughs> it still is a small town in Tasmania. Um, but, yeah, so they're all just bits and pieces. Use your tea bags as you use them for covering your papers, your doilies, your index cards, Um the old paper flowers, we all tend to have lots of them floating around. If not, you can pick them up for a dime a dozen. Change them a little bit. Stamp on them. Put little bits and pieces. Remember the bits that are in scrapbooking paper that you might not like the rest of. Find little areas that you can cut out and use them as add-ons. I hope you've really enjoyed it. I hope you've got something else out of it. I've used one, two, three, four of my six gazillion index cards so that's a bonus <laughs> and until next time happy crafting thanks guys bye